Today's video is sponsored by Coconut Monkey Electronics. For custom handmade pickups and a variety of cool colors and materials and custom rewinds, check out their website and take their perfect pickup quiz. And remember, when you support my sponsors, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. What up, G's? Brad the Guitologist here. The hits keep coming hard and fast. Today we have a custom amplifier on the bench. This one's probably late 60s or early 70s. This is a model 695PA. We have a channel over here with volume, treble, and bass. Two inputs. We have a channel over here with volume, treble, bass, and reverb with two inputs. We're going to plug a speaker into it and just see if we can't recreate whatever problem it has. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stick around. Here's the back of the amplifier. We won't be able to see very much until we actually get the chassis out, but we can see that there is a speaker jack here. Um, this speaker jack looks to be possibly non-original. There's another hole here. I don't know if there was a second jack here at one time or if the jack used to be over here. We do have a label back behind there. You're going to have a hard time reading it, but it does say model uh, 695PA. It's a, it gives a serial number a 5949 and a color on it this is charcoal let's go ahead and spin this thing around i've got it hooked up to a speaker load over here and we'll see if we can't uh recreate whatever the problem was but before we do that i want to check the uh check the fuses and make sure that they are the correct value and let's see that one's f five amp i probably also want to go ahead and bust out a schematic pretty early on this one because um, I haven't serviced any custom amps before. Well, I have. It's been, I have serviced one custom amp before in my life, and that's been quite a long time ago. So I'm coming to this more or less fresh. I'll be learning as you do. So best thing to do in this situation would be to grab a schematic pretty early. Uh, but first, let's see if we can't uh, figure out what the problem is. All right, we're going to go ahead and bring this up slowly on the Variac back there. Well, I hear something at the speaker already. And it sounds like it's all coming from the reverb. Because I can turn that all the way down. And uh, the noise disappears. That's on very low voltage though. So let's go ahead and dial it up a little bit more. Alright, there we are at our customary halfway stopping point. Uh, 64 volts on the input, 0.19 amps is all we're drawing, so um, I don't think we have any major shorts or anything like that. But that's good news. So that's obviously doing some uh, oscillations that I can't get to stop. Okay. There's 120 volts on the input. It's trying to. Sounds like the reverb is not even hooked up. Like the the line coming back in from the reverb maybe is still hooked up. Well, I can test that. Yeah, see the line from the reverb coming back in where it's getting mixed back is hooked up, but it sounds like there's no input to the reverb circuit. Something's getting dragged to ground perhaps. Yeah, that's some really bad some kind of blocking distortion. I would say, if I had to guess, I would say uh, there's a bad transistor somewhere, probably on the output. Truth be told, this actually sounds better than some of the pedals I've heard lately. All right, so there's obviously a problem. Uh, but enough speculation, let's go ahead and pop it open and see what we can find. Okay, I've got the screws out of the bottom. We're ready to pull this chassis and it looks like both of the leads to the reverb are still hooked up so that'll be the rectifier probably right there uh, here are the main two 
filter capacitors, the big reservoir capacitors for the power. Here's our power transformer over here, pretty nice, nice size. Got a couple of different boards in this thing. We got a board back here on the back. Uh, this thing has got those uh, little spaceship looking transistors in it. You know, I, I watch a lot of electronics repair channels and stuff on YouTube, and I've seen a lot of repairmen um, pull a lot of these out of different things because they were bad. It looks like we have three different boards in this. We have this one uh, that these components are on. I uh, have another one over here on the side, and we've got some transistors over here on it too. Probably the preamp board up here up front. Uh, there's one side probably for that channel, and then we have another side over here, it's, which is probably identical. They look like mirror images of one another, so that's probably for the other channel. Not sure where the reverb is unless it's this board over here. This might be the... This might have something to do with the reverb over on this side, this board. I'm guessing it, well yeah it must because we've got, see that gray wire right there coming out down there? That gray wire is running up here to the input of the reverb tank and then it comes out of that, that, that red wire is a ground so it comes out of that and goes over there. We definitely have a, pro a problem with the reverb module. Of that I'm fairly certain. You may notice on the front of the amplifier it said Ross, uh, and on these boards also it says Ross. amp has a fuse on the speaker so you don't blow your speaker so if um, I guess if you get a, a current rush it won't uh, it won't burn up your speaker coil that's what that right there is you can see it's see those wires going back here to the speaker jack this whole back plate back here acts as a heat sink for the power transistors and uh, I think I'd kind of like to test the power transistors probably pretty early on here because my guess is there's a problem with the, with one or more of them. All right, I've taken the chassis out of the cabinet and we can get a little better look at the reverb tank. It looks like it's probably a Gibbs reverb tank to me and it is 1966. Okay, this is a website called VintageCustom.com and they have a lot of, um, looks like they have a lot of schematics, but unfortunately they don't have this model. And they also have them broken down into PC boards over here, so they have uh, PC board numbers. Unfortunately, none of the PC boards in this particular amplifier uh, have any numbers on them. Okay, so our search for a schematic was pretty much a complete bust. As a matter of fact, there's not much information at all online about custom amplifiers, really. Uh, and it's kind of unfortunate because there are still quite a few of these out there, and it would be nice to keep them running for uh, you know another generation. But if you can't find the schematics, you can't find the schematics. So, um, but here's what I'm thinking at the moment: um, both channels were producing that. Uh, blocking distortion so whatever it is it is probably not uh, on this first board here it could I, I suppose have something to do with the power supply to this board uh, but I'm gonna go on the assumption for the moment at least that it's probably on something uh, back here in the output could be on this board over here this little one um, I may go poking around on this board in just a minute but my guess is it's probably one of these output transistors so I think what I'd like to do at this point is plug it back into the speaker um, and do some measurements for voltages and just see where we're where we're getting voltages and where we aren't. 
and I may also do some kind of some uh, signal tracing around see if we can't locate somewhere where the where the distortion you know sort of begins okay there's 40 volts right there and there's 40 volts right there okay so there's 40 volts at those two points there's 40 there it should be Oh, well, there's nothing on that one, and look at look at why. Look at this. You see that right there? See what I'm seeing? That large resistor, which is going right, it's supposed to be going right there into that transistor, is not connected. That would certainly create a problem, wouldn't it? And it looks like there's some cold solder up here on this ground too. Look at this shit. Definitely a cold solder. Not even really soldered at all. So that that resistor and a corresponding resistor over here, neither one of those were really soldered on. What? What's the difference between me and running water? The difference between you and running water. Yeah. Um, one of them gets me clean, the other one gets me dirty. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, <laughs> all right, so I soldered that resistor back on right there, and good solder joint there now, and I've got a good solder joint over here now. Both of those were, for some reason, uh, not connected, which was, which is rather weird. Anyway, uh, we have those repaired, and... Brush your hair before you put yourself on camera. What? Why do I need to brush my hair? I do live in a bush. I live in oh. your bush. <laughs> God damn it. Respect the bush. And now it works. Not sure about the reverb yet. When I turn the reverb up, I do get noise, which I would expect to get, but uh, haven't really got given it a proper test yet. So yeah, both channels do work, and we're gonna give this thing a proper test here in a second. I believe we're ready to go with this. Let's put it back in the cabinet, make sure the reverb works, and we'll give it a proper test. Okay, so scratch that. Um, plugged it in, and the reverb did not work. So, what we do know about the reverb is that the output at least uh, was working because we were getting signal out of the reverb. The problem is uh, there seems to be nothing going into the tank. So what I'm doing right here is measuring. Um, this is the output over here on this side, and we can clearly see right there that's continuous over here on the output so what we're doing here is we're measuring the DC resistance of this little uh, inductor right here on the output uh, there is a similar inductor over here on the input you can see it's uh, covered in little red tape right here uh, we're gonna measure from the inputs uh, here and we should see roughly the same thing that we saw on the output. Uh, but we can see there it's uh, it's open. On the inductor itself there are two little pads right here where the these wires that are coming in from the, the uh, input jack are connected here to the inductor. There are some tiny little wires uh, that they connect to on these terminals. And we'll test this out. jumping around quite a lot I'm thinking we have a broken wire somewhere over here or one that's you know intermittent I think what I'm gonna try to do is uh, flow the solder on these points here and also reflow some solder over here I might even change these uh, wires here as well on the input and we'll see if we can't bring this um, see if we can't bring this tank back to life. I'm just gonna touch up the solder, just kind of reflow it, and hope that uh, it improves the connection. 
Oh, it's just, this is probably about the best I'm going to be able to do. And if it, I can't get a reading after this, then um, I think this tank might be a lost cause. I don't know. I just appear to be getting nothing. I'll tell you what, let's, let's just hook them over here. Because I want to see if I can... Yeah, see, I can grab this thing and kind of move it around, and I start to get some connection. I want to show you what we're dealing with here when we, we try to fix something like this. It's going to be real tough to see, and what I might have to do is just kind of surgically come in here and cut that red tape because I think right underneath that red tape is where our leads are coming in off of the coil and we need to re-solder uh, one or both of those coil leads so this is going to be a very delicate procedure uh, first I'm going to need an exacto knife because we got to open that up and see what's under there and this is going to be very tough to film, so if the camera goes shaky and stuff, for, please forgive me because this is not going to be easy. <clears throat> okay, so what I want to do is cut, cut this like so. There's the wire. You see that wire right there? This one right down here. See, it's not even connected to anything. It is supposed to be connected to this lead up here. but it is not and I think that might be our problem we're gonna try to solder this on we've got some adhesive on there it looks like a lot of times you can actually you can burn adhesive off of wires like this but you also have to be extremely careful because in the process of trying to solder wires this tiny uh, they can also just burn up and once you've burned them once you've burned them so far um, there's no way of getting them back Let's try to scrape a little bit of that off of there and then we'll try to solder this on. And this is, I mean, you talk about delicate, this is going to be a very, very delicate thing to do. Um, I wish I had some, some kind of scale for you here. I mean, you could see the tip of the X-Acto knife, but it doesn't really give you a sense of scale. Um, Let's try, here I'll show you. Okay, here's a guitar pick. So it's right there down on the tip of the guitar pick. Like I said, I'm, right now I'm just trying to kind of burn off that adhesive that was on that and I'm going to clean the tip again
Okay. Whew. Now I can breathe a little bit. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's measure again and see if that did the trick. <clears throat> And there we go. That's about what we should see. So I think what we've just done is salvage this reverb tank. And if you have a reverb tank also that doesn't appear to be working, um, you could do the same sort of thing. And I almost guarantee you, you'll find the break. You just have to be very, very careful, very delicate. Actually, it helps a lot to have this camera because this camera has such good zoom on it. Uh, I was actually watching my work through the camera's uh, a viewfinder, if you can believe it. Um, but there are other alternatives too. Uh, there's actually one really good alternative if you don't have uh, a way to see things very small that you're working on like that, that we will go over in a future video. Um, but for now, I think, like I said, we have this thing fixed. At least the reverb tank is fixed, so we can test it out. Uh, we'll plug it back into the amp and see if uh, the reverb works now. this again there we go it's working now all right it's time to give this thing a listen I'm going to use my American Standard Telecaster also I've changed microphones on the cabinet I kind of really want uh, not that all that satisfied with the typical SM57 uh, sort of sound to me it just it comes across as a bit boxy I don't know about you guys but um, the last few I've done where I've actually mic'd up the cabinets to me it just seems a little boxy and I, I don't know I'm kind of iffy on it so I've changed to an Electro Voice model 635A it's like an omnidirectional microphone it's vintage uh, I found it at a local pawn shop for like 20 bucks or something and I bought it um, and I'm gonna try it on this and see how it goes
that is a 1966 custom model 695 PA. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit subscribe down below. Also hit the bell to receive all notifications. And for now, y'all take care.